And now we're visiting with John Hardoon, the man behind the legendary Raggers and Sheets. And for horse racing fans, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about the Raggers and Sheets, the Bible of horse racing ratings and numbers. John, great to have you on the show this week. I know it's March Madness weekend. You're not a big basketball fan. I know you're a big horse racing fan, obviously, and it's the Florida Derby this weekend. I'm down here in Florida. I'm looking forward to it. And there's a big horse in the race here this weekend I want to talk to you about, and that is Forte. Let me ask you about Forte, John. He's going off as a four to five early money line favorite in the race, and it's not your style. I know that, and you're going to do a nice Florida Derby show with Chad Summers and Greg here in a day or so, and we'll get your preview on that particular race. But what's your take on a horse pulling up four to five that's an 11 post in the Florida Derby? Well, it's just, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be on your show with you. And uh, Forte is obviously the horse to beat. Listen, as far as all the numbers are concerned for these three-year-olds, it's Forte and then it's the rest of them. The rest of them you could basically throw a blanket over. They'll take chances beating each other each time they face each other. But Forte at this point is is ahead of the rest of them. He had six career starts. He's won five of them. So he's really done very little wrong. Breaking from the 11 post kind of makes it a more fair race because, you know, he's up against it breaking from that post. And it's not an easy thing to do. But he is that much better, I think, than the rest of them. And uh, what I would do in this situation is you take a horse that's a favorite and you hook him up with a couple of big prices underneath. We do that a lot of times on the show with Greg and Chad, uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a, a short priced horse and we put some 20 and 30 to one shots underneath and you turned a, a three to five shot into a 15 to one shot. So that's the way that I would attack a race like this. You know, again, breaking from the 11 post, not an easy thing to do. If you remember a few years ago, uh, Pletcher had a horse named Mo Donegal that yeah. drew the 12 post in the same race and he ended up scratching because he got the 12 post. Uh, they didn't say it was the post position for the reason that he scratched the horse, but insiders knew that that was, that was the plan because Mo Donegal, while he was better than some of them, he wasn't that much better than the rest of them, and that's the case with Forte. So, you know, if you're looking to play Forte, you, you got to find some value and use some price horses underneath, and that's the way that I would attack the race. Let me ask you this, John. Forte's got 90 points on the Derby Road right now. He's already in the Florida Derby for all intents and purposes. In the Kentucky Derby. At Kentucky Derby, I'm sorry, yes. So would you see or envision any at all the possibility of Todd Pletcher not running this horse because he knows he's in the Kentucky Derby and just find a warm-up race between him now and then? Well, there really aren't that many opportunities. The Derby's only uh, 36 days away, I believe, or 30 Five weeks right. days away. So, you know, he'll, if he ends up not running him, he's just going to wait for the Derby. But I think he's probably going to run him because he knows he's the best in this race. He really does. I mean, again, there are 12 horses in the race, so anything could happen. That's why they run the race. I think he's going to run, you know, the horse supposedly doing very well, training well, and everything else. And it, he is only going to be making his second start of the year. His second start as a three-year-old. He had five races as a two-year-old and they were all good. And he came out as a three-year-old and he ran a new top. He ran an eight minus on the sheets last time out, which is a good number. He had an eight top as a two-year-old. You like to see the little improvements and that's what he's doing. He's inching forward and he's going to be primed for top effort come the first Saturday in May. Wait, we talked about that white elephant in the room, John, about the fact that he is in that 11 hole. And I came across this fact that 24 races that had at least nine starters at Gulfstream that went a mile and an eighth on dirt in the last five years, those horses are 0 for 10. And if you take, take a look at the uh, posts that are 9 through 12, they're just 2 for 54. So that's going to be a little bit of a hurdle. And I know you're talking about if you're backing Forte, you're looking to put something underneath him, you know, to bring up some value in the race here. Does that post position scare you about backing Forte? It does. But when you look at stats, you have to know the odds on those, you know, nine horses that or whatever it is, nine for what did you say, nine for 52 or? Uh Coming in, yes, 9 for 52, yes. Okay, so we don't know about the 43 other horses. They could have all been 20 to 1 shots. How many of them were favorites that got beat is the, is the real question that you want to ask. I understand completely. Now you've got, 
if you will, Todd Pletcher, who has really, really been uh, uh, tremendous in his career, as we shared with you before we went on the air, $455 million in winnings, 52% of his horses have hit the board. That's incredible. But in his Florida Derby career, he's had six winners, but only two of his 62 starters have won the Kentucky Derby, those being super safer and always dreaming. Does he have a Kentucky Derby horse here in Forte? He definitely has a Kentucky Derby horse. I mean, he, you know, like you said, he's in already. I mean, unless uh, something happens physically or there's some sort of setback but between now and and May, uh, the first Saturday of May, he, he'll be running and he will be the favorite come, Saturday, come Derby Day. He will be the favorite, even if he gets beat Saturday. You know, I, I don't see him not being the favorite, but it, obviously – if he wins impressively, he's going to be a lot shorter price than if he doesn't win impressively because the Derby people are always looking, you know, to bet some sort of price. You're betting in a 20 horse field. It's tough to take a short price in a 20 horse field. Look at last year when Striker Rich won at 80 to one or whatever he was. He was the rank outsider. It does happen. And then a lot of times it happens on those days. As great as Pletcher is, and he is great. I don't know how many Derbies has he won. He puts a lot of money in the game. He's got a lot of money behind him. You know, I don't know if he's won the amount of derbies he should have won, considering, again, the, the investment that goes in. Look at Baffert. Baffert, no one's been better than Baffert in triple crowns races. He trains specifically to win the derby, to win triple crowns. Everyone has their own style. Uh, Pletcher, not so much. He's more interested in just being consistent throughout the year. You know, he points for Florida. Uh, like Chad Brown, points for Saratoga. Certain trainers point for certain meets. And he's not big on winning triple crown races, I don't think. I mean, I'm sure he's won his share of them. But for the amount of money and the amount of good starters he has, I don't know if he's really lived up to the full potential. Just my say, opinion. <laughs> but, I'm sorry? Just my opinion. I'm not, you know. Uh, would it be safe to say then, uh, we're talking about Todd Pletcher, you mentioned Bob Baffert. Uh, I don't think there's much of a decision between which of the two trainers uh, is the tra trainer that's most credible, if you will. I don't remember Pletcher ever being in trouble. Has he has he been suspended any at all throughout his career that you're aware of? Very few. He had one positive a couple of years ago at uh, Saratoga, but for the most part, he's as clean as they, as they come. Clean as a whistle. I like that. I'm going to close it out with this, John, with you uh, talking about the f horses that have come out of the Florida Derby that went on to win a triple crown race. Uh, 20 of them have done that out of the Florida Derby to win a triple crown race, 14 the Kentucky Derby. They say arguably the best horse that won a Florida Derby that won a Kentucky Derby was Spectacular Bid in 1979. Some might say Nashua, Carryback, Holy Bull, or Northern Dancer, which of those horses would you put in the top of the esteem list of those horses out of the Florida Derby that won the Kentucky Derby? Yeah, it's like comparing Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle. You know, <laughs> when you get to the great ones, there's very little between them, to be honest with you. And you left another horse off of there, Big Brown, who at the time know. was as good as there was. And he broke, I think, from post-12 winning it. Monarcos, Monarcos won, I think, also from post-12. Uh, a few years after that. So, you know, you can't compare great ones at different eras, different times, different styles, different trainers. You know, it's I, I don't compare greats to greats because once you hit a certain plateau, that's it. You're in the group of greatness. But there'll only be one secretary, John. <laughs> there will only be one secretary. That's true. Hey, thanks for joining me, John. I really appreciate that. If anybody's interested in what John offers here, the sheets, the Ragas and Sheets, you can log on to his website at johnsheets.com, J-O-N-S-H-E-E-T-S, johnsheets.com, or you can email him at johnhardoon at rocketmail.com. You can pick up a daily multi-card special for as little as $40 for those fantastic Ragas and numbers here. Check it out at johnsheets.com. John, I'm going to look forward to your show that you do with Chad Summers and Greg this weekend for the Florida Derby and wish you nothing but the best of luck this weekend. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for letting me join you. I appreciate it, and I look forward to doing it again. Thank Likewise. you. Stay safe and be well. Likewise, same right back at you, John. Take care.